Okay, good evening, dear women. Yishar koach, dear righteous women. Let's first bless. Bezrat Hashem shagia mashiach. Tzedekim b'mera b'amenu amen. Shagia mebasar eliyahu, nabiliyahu, tishbiliyahu. Glidi b'mera b'nosh 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 Moshe Rabbeinu, Allah wa shalom, zechotot agen elenu, tiyin ishmi tzorah b'tzorah chayim, amen. Dear women, I would like to tell you, next week, on Monday, Bezrat Hashem, it's before Ta'anit Esther, before the fast of Esther and, and Purim, we're going to have a special lesson about Purim and the Jewish laws of Purim. So please don't forget, next lesson is all about Purim, and then we'll go back to Tomer Dvorah. Mm -hmm. But next lesson is all about Purim. I would like to remind you that this Shabbat is called Shabbat Zachor. Yeah. This is called Shabbat Zachor, the Shabbat that you have to remember. Zachor at the Asalech Amalek. We have to remember what Amalek did to the children of Israel when they yeah. went out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And even though they saw all the miracles of God, still they went against God. Even though they saw and they went against the children of Israel, which they saw that God protected them. So we have to remember that every Shabbat before, before Purim, and next week is Purim. Uh, Wednesday evening is already Purim. So dear women, and Wednesday itself, the day itself is the fast of, of Esther. So I would like to tell you the Shabbat before Purim is called Shabbat Zachor. Because this month we have four Shabbatot, special Shabbatot. Okay, the first one was Shabbat Shkalim, which was Rosh... Uh, 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 Shabbat Mevachim Rosh Chodesh Adar, and then we had Shabbat Zachor, we have it this week, which is before Purim, and then we have Shabbat Para, the Shabbat of Para Aduma, of the red cow, and then we have before Rosh Chodesh Nisan, we have Shabbat Chodesh, it's called, the Shabbat of the month. These are four special Shabbatot that are written also in Shulchan Aruch. So these, are, we are inside the Shabbatot, inside those Shabbatot. So I would like to tell you, don't forget Zachor et Asher Salech Amalek. I gave lessons about it, and you can see it in Torah anytime that count, uh, that come in sh on Shabbat Zachor, so you can go and listen to Shabbat Zachor. It's all about Amalek and how we need to remember because that eventually, the biggest war is the war of Amalek. The Zohar Kadosh says, even Gog u Magog. Even the war of Gog of Magog will not be like the war of Amalek. Because the war of Amalek is the war against the 50th gate of impurity, which is the gate of Emunah, of belief. And you know where is Amalek? Yes. Shh, exactly. Amalek is in each and every one of us. It's not, it's, there's also the, the Buhaba. There's also the root of Amalek that is all around us. It says that I, the sages said that it, they welcome. Here, please come and sit down over there. Amalek. It's, it says. Amalek. It says that. <laughs> it says, dear women. <laughs> We have the pleasure to have a lot of guests today. Baruch Hashem. It's Lechvod Moshe Rabbeinu. I would like to tell you, Vemet, dear women, it says that Amalek, the sages said that in the times of Mashiach, which we are in the times of Mashiach, that part of the Jewish people, the root of their souls will be from Amalek. Erev Rav and Amalek. Erev Rav are the people that went out of Egypt, were Egyptians, that converted to Judaism because of the ten plagues. They were so afraid of God, they converted to Judaism. So it says, the sages say that they did not want to be in the times of Mashiach. Why? Because there will be such a mix of, of light and darkness, mainly darkness. Why? Because a lot of souls, that, people that look like Jewish people, but they are not Jewish. They are, the root of the soul is from Amalek or Erev Rav. So that's why they didn't know. So dear women, I wish Bezrat Hashem that God will take the Amalek that is among us and will take Amalek that is inside us away Bezrat Hashem. The Amalek that is inside us is the Amalek of Emunah, which is the belief. Sometimes we say, you know, today I heard something. Sometimes we say we, we believe in Hashem, we believe in Hashem. But then when this belief comes to test, 
We lose our belief. We, we do not really believe. We believe from the mouth outside. But the true emunah that we, when we believe with our heart, it's like when I told you that the true, the true smile, I, I didn't give it oh over God. here. The true smile, you know, I gave it last week in, a, in, a, in one of my lessons, and I told him, you know, dear women, we have to see every person that we meet, Besever Panimia Fort, with a smile. Every person that we meet, we should meet him with a smile. It says about, shh, shh, let's have your attention. It says about Rabbi Hanina, the Tana, Rabbi Hanina Ben Zakai. It says about him that there wasn't a, a person <coughs> that greeted him for hello before he said hello. He said to everyone hello before they greeted him back. And he, even a goy, even a non-Jewish person, he was the first one to say hello. This we studied from Abi Khanin Ben Zakai. So it says, and how did he say hello? Because there's hello and there's hello. <laughs> you know, there, <laughs> there are a few hellos. How do we say it? We say it with a smile. And I want to tell you something. In order to have the Shekhinah around us, we need to be happy. It's not easy to be happy. It's easier to be sad. The, why it's easier to be sad? Everybody knows it. It's easier to be depressed. It's easier to be sad. And why is it easier to be sad, dear women? Because this comes from the evil inclination, the evil inclination wants us to be sad because if we are sad, we don't have a true belief in Hashem. We do not want to pray. We need to fight with ourselves to pray. We don't have the strength to do the mitzvot. We don't have the strength to do the mitzvot. We don't have the strength to do what God wants us to do. So this is from the evil inclination. This is very easy to be sad and depressed. Very easy. Look at 24 hours of a day. Women, if you look at your own, shh, at your, yourselves in one day, you'll see how, how, and just, you know what, even make a record and you'll see how many times a day you become sad. Angry, sad, depressed, mm -hmm. nothing goes your way. How many times? Uh, how many times we, we get depressed so nothing goes our way? This got, this happened in a minute. We wanted to do something and then something happened. We couldn't do it and then we, ah, oh, look what happened. <laughs> dear <laughs> women, everything. Can. <laughs> everything, dear women, is from Hashem. So how can we be happy? How we, because you know, Moshe Rabbeinu, shh. This, this. Dear it's women, so listen very carefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How can we make ourselves happy? Oh, so sometimes I happy. see, I see my children also, <laughs> and I see. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right to imitate. Nachon, to imitate. You're right. It says that 22 years Yaakov Avinu, the Shechina did not go upon Yaakov Avinu 22 years because he was sad because of Yosef. He did Yosef not have a separate. 22 years the Shekhinah was not with him, was not upon him, did not speak to him. So dear women, how do we make ourselves happy like Moshe Rabbeinu? How can we make ourselves happy? So I will tell you what I tell my children and other people. First of all, look, shh, I need to see your eyes. Leave everything for, you know, like a few, a few minutes, let's concentrate. Just look at me so I can see all of you. Dorit, I want to see you too. Dear women, how do we make ourselves happy? So first of all, I always tell them, you should move the muscles of your face. It's very easy. Just make a smile. You see? Just my first smile. Everybody have a smile on their faces. First of all, have a smile. Wait. It's very, wait. It starts with a smile. Wait. I'll explain. So first of all, we are going to... You know, it's, it, will make, it will make us also look younger. Yeah. Once we, have, we move our muscles in the face, it, we make ourselves younger. <laughs> so, first of all, we move our muscles in the face. We make a smile. Yeah. Now, the smile is only on our face. We do not feel it in the heart, yeah. and we do not feel it in the liver. Wait. <laughs> but in our heads, we already gave a command to make a smile. Okay. <laughs> so it's the beginning. Yeah. Then, after we make a smile, we should think about something happy that makes us happy and then we'll say thank you God for all the things that you gave us. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all the miracles that you make. And a little by little you'll see that it comes, it touches the heart mm -hmm. and we start to smile not only with a face, we yeah. smile with our heart. Lev Sameach. That's why it's written Lev Sameach. And then the most important thing 
is that our liver will smile with us. And you'll ask me, how come? What do I want from my liver to smile with <laughs> What do you want from our liver? Dear women, because in the liver there's the nephesh. This part of the soul that is called the nephesh is in the liver, in our bloodstream. That's why everything that we eat, if we do not bless, goes into our bloodstream. And it has a, a, a ruach, a nephesh, a soul inside. And if we do not bless, it's part of our body. So its characteristics is also part of our body. If we blessed, we made a tikkun, a fixing to the, the food. Because I told you the Baal Shem Tov says, you, you are not choosing this. If you have a lot of burekas on the plate, you are, it's, from, it's not a coincidence that you chose this burekas and not the other one. They look all the same. So why did you choose this specific one? Because it's from a Shem. God wanted you to take it and to bless it, to do a fixing for it. Why? Because you are connected. We do not know exactly how we are connected, but we know that we are all part of one soul. You know, all of us are part of one body. Right. All of the children of Israel, we look different, but we are part of one soul. In the spiritual world, we are one soul. So we cannot get angry with, with each other. We should be happy that around our table, a lot of people come, Baruch Hashem. We are doing Achnasat Orchim like Avram Avinu. Achnasat Orchim is bigger than even receiving the Shekhinah. At Kedekach, so it's a big schud, dear women. So dear women, once we started to smile with our live it means that we cause this nefesh to be happy with Hashem because we came over here to do the fixing of all of the soul. How do we do it? By causing us to be happy. Once we are happy, we have gratitude to Hashem. We cannot be happy without gratitude. Once we have gratitude, when something good happens to us, we are happy with all of our body. The Khan, we are happy with all, even with the liver. So we need to be, you need to smile with your liver, with your heart with your mind so everything this smile becomes so at the beginning it's only moving the muscles every day even when we feel very bad first let's move our muscles just rem remember that <laughs> the muscles yeah. of the face you have to remember that and then you'll see a little by little you you'll feel the this energy of happiness I want you to know, once you are happy, Hashem is with you immediately. There's a tube that is open. The happiness opens the tube to Hashem. When we are sad, it closes. It's like we are suffocating this tube. Okay, yeah. Instead of having prosperity, we are just cutting it. So, but just, it's very easy just by being happy. I told you it's very hard in this world to be happy because the evil inclination causes us to see which means it, it causes us to see the half glass that is not filled. Like we are missing this and missing this. But if we think about it, we are not missing any, anything. Anything. God gave us exactly what we need to do the fixing in this world. Everything. The husband, the children, the, the in-laws that we have, the house, the food on the table, everything that we need, God gave us to do the fixing. So, Baruch Hashem, we should study from Moshe Rabbeinu. Otherwise, the Shekhinah wouldn't have been with him. You understand that, dear women? Yeah. This parasha, this portion of the week of this Shabbat, that is Shabbat Zachor, is the portion of Tetzaveh. I gave a few lectures about the portion of Tetzaveh. Always the portion of Tetzaveh is on the Shabbat of the, when the, there's the Yod side of Moshe Rabbeinu. On the Shabbat of Zayin Be'adar, dear women. This Thursday is Zayin Be'adar. It's the Yod side of Moshe Rabbeinu. It's the Hilula of Moshe Rabbeinu. So I would like to tell you, you need to light a candle on Wednesday the evening for Lilud Nishmat Moshe Rabbeinu, this coming. Every year on that, on Zayin Be'adar, the week of Zayin Be'adar, is also, we read the parashat, parashat Etzaveh. It's on the same week. Why? This is the only portion of the week that the name of Moshe Rabbeinu is not mentioned. The only portion. Moshe Rabbeinu is not mentioned over there. His name is not mentioned. So, and why? Because he told Hashem, God told him, Look how, what a big prophet he was. God told him after the sin of the golden cloth, Chet Egel, God, God told him, I am going to wipe the children of Israel. I'm going to kill them. And then, instead of them, from you, they will be the children of Israel. The people of the children of Israel. You are going to be the one. 
And Moshe Rabbeinu told him, no, don't do that, Moshe Rabbeinu said. If you will do that, take me off your book from the Torah. Take my name from the Torah. So at Kadosh Baruch Hu, in this portion of the week, Tetzaveh, he took off his name from the Torah. But he put his name of the, in the Torah, Beremez. Beremez, rega, remez, remez. In a code. In a hint, in a hint, okay. in a hint, how? Agera, the Gaon Mevilna says there is 101 psukim in this parasha, dear women. One, one, oh one, 101 psukim verses in this portion of the week. And you know, 101 is exactly for Moshe Rabbeinu because Moshe is written like this. Mem Shin Hei. This is Moshe, and if I write it Bemiluyotiot, I write the Mem as Mem, this is Mem, and then I write Shin as Shin, this is Shin, okay? This is how it, you hear me, Mem, so I wrote Mem. And then Shin of Moshe Rabbeinu, I wrote Shin. And then I have the He of Moshe Rabbeinu. And if I take out, dear women, the first letters over here of Moshe, I'll take it out. You'll see that what is left is Mem is numer has numerical value of 40, Yud is 10, <coughs> Nun is 50, and Aleph is 1. How much is it? 1 or 1. So God hints to us, God hints to us that he does mention Moshe Rabbeinu inside, but inside his Miluyotiyot, inside his full name, also, our names, we can write it as a full name. If my name is Iris, I can write Aleph, Aleph, Lamed, Pei. Okay? Each letter with its full uh, word. So, over here, he hints to us. And also, 101 is Michael. Michael. It says, before Moshe Rabbeinu passed, he was the keeper of the children of Israel. Once Moshe Rabbeinu passed away, Michael, Sar, Apotropus, Sar Shel Israel. The angel Michael became the, the protector of the children of Israel. Mem in numerical value is 40, Yud is 10, Chaf is 20, okay? Aleph is 1 and Lamed is 30. How much is it? 101. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everything is same. Every word in Hebrew has the name of God inside. I cannot show it to you because I don't want to play, to do something with the names of God. But every, Bam is also the name of God. Vedibarta Bam. Every word in, in the Bible is the name of God. If the Bible was written, was put up together in the right order, in the right order, dear women, I want you to know that we could, by reading from the Bible, if we were true with Hashem, we could revive the dead and make the sick people healthy. That's why the Torah is not written in order. Because otherwise we could have done it just by reading it. Because God says, Anochi Hashem Elokecha. God put His essence which means God put his essence in the letters of the Torah. I write it over here. Dear women, it says, the Chida says, how do we know that Notrikon me'a Torah? How do we know that Notrikon means that when we have a word, in the Torah, that each letter symbolizes another word, okay? This is not Rikon. So the Chida says, How do we know that? We know that from the first Diber, the first Ten Commandments. It says, Anochi Hashem Elokecha. And then by the Tarjum, it says, Anochi, this word is Ana, Nafshi, Ktivat, Yehavit. Which means God says, I put my essence inside the letters of the Torah. That's why when we study Torah truly, the Lishma, for the sake of heaven, we cause many angels to wake up and to protect the children of Israel. We cause it only by saying, that's when we say to Helim, you have to move your lips by the letters. You have to ask Shrey just to move. Because when you do that, 
And you have to hear yourself say that. You know, it has to be in a way that you hear yourself say that, dear women. So why? Because then you, you create angels literally create angels. Mm -hmm. So it's very important when we read Tehillim to be tsanua, to be modest, to be covered. The elbow should be covered and the head should be... And of course here, it's very important that we will be covered because we want those angels to protect us and all the children of Israel. If you want to have, you have to be kosher, totally. <laughs> you have to do it, mamash. You have to close yourself and you have to cover your head, dear women. It's very, very important. Then everything is a mamash bekdusha. Everything is sanctuary. Truly, mamash bekdusha. So, dear women, So, dear women, please listen to me. If you want to listen to Parashat Etzaveh, you'll go to otoraanytime.com and Shabbat Zachor. I gave special lessons about them. So, you'll find it over there. Today, we're going to speak how Moshe Rabbeinu left this world. Now, Moshe Rabbeinu, you know, Haman Arasha, the evil Haman, wanted, he, he took the poor, he, he made a grala, and he caused, he said that the children of Israel were killed on the month of Adar. Because he said, Moshe Rabbeinu, he, their biggest prophet, died on the month of Adar, on the seventh of Adar. But dear women, he did not know that Moshe Rabbeinu was also born on the month of Adar. Mm -hmm. Moshe Rabbeinu was born on the 7th of Adar and, was, and died on the 7th of Adar. It was his birthday and also the day that he passed away from this world. Dear women, So he did not know that. This is Mamash. So he decided that Adar will be the month. But this Adar is the month of, of big, big miracles for the children of Israel. Because this is the month that God took Amalek and hanged him with ten of his sons on trees. This is Amalek bimera b'yameinu amen. Shakadosh Baruch Hu mikol Amalek. But now we are going to start. Bezrat Hashem. Before I'll start, I'll open. זה חומש. יש לי שאלה, אם אנחנו נגיד לפני שאומרים תהילים את הפסוק הזה לבן אדם חולה ובריא, איזה פסוק? את חייבת אומץ, את חייבת אומץ, מה יש לך לעשות? את לא צריכה להגיד את זה, לא, את צריכה רק לכוון על החולה. את צריכה רק לכוון נשמה. אז זה רק מראה שהמהות של הקדוש היא בתוך האותיות שאנחנו כותבים. מכאן מגיע איך למדו חכמינו זכרונם לברכה, מאיפה לומדים שיש נוטריקון בתורה. נוטריקון לומדים מזה. Okay, dear women, let's continue. <coughs> <coughs> then he thought, Haman Rasha, the wicked Haman thought that we don't have any luck on that time because the biggest prophet of the Jewish people passed away on the seventh of Adar. So he thought once, up, and he does not know that the righteous people of the children of Israel, when they pass away, their merit is bigger than when they're alive in this world. They give more merit to the children of Israel when they pass away, more than when they're alive in this world. But he did not know that, because he was Amalek. He was from the Zeram, from the root of Amalek, dear women. He was one of the descendants of Esav. Talking about that. Rav Moshe Feinstein was born at the same day and passed away at the same day, right? So does it have any connection? Because some people say it's the same as Shama and his name was also Moshe. Huh? Uh, there's a connection. Chayavliot, there's a nitzot, a sparkle, Bezrat Hashem. Chayavliot, it's a connection. Okay, dear women, it says in the Prophet Yahushua, in the book of Prophet Yahushua, now please pay attention, we'll do it together. It says in the Prophet, I need you to pay attention because I'm going to tell you things, but I want you to concentrate so you have the feeling of Moshe Rabbeinu. You know, Bezrat Hashem, his soul is with us now because we're doing Lilu Nishmato. So his soul is with us. So Bezrat Hashem, Shegia Bimera Biyameinu, because you know the Mashiach, Mashayahu Shiye. The Mashiach is Moshe Rabbeinu. The Mashiach Ben David, that, because Moshe Rabbeinu had all of the souls inside him. All of the Jewish souls were part of Moshe Rabbeinu. So Mashayahu Shiye says Shlomo Amelech King Solomon, which means Moshe Rabbeinu will come back and he will be with Mashiach. And it says that Zohar Kadosh says Raya Meimana, which means Raya Meimana is the, the Holy Shepherd, the Meiman, uh, Kilu. It's Ma? 
Loyal, the loyal shepherd, dear women. Toda. When I speak quickly in Hebrew, I lose the word sometimes in English. It says at the beginning of the prophet Yoshua that after the death of Moshe Rabbeinu, God tells to Yeshua Binun that he has to go to pass there, then to pass the, the river of Jordan, the Jordan River, and to go to the land of Israel. He tells him, my loyal subject, Moshe Rabbeinu, passed away. Look how God feels for Moshe Rabbeinu and why. So we'll start the story about Moshe. How did Moshe Rabbeinu pass away? It says in Parashat Vayet Hanan, at, at Chumash Dvarim, that Moshe Rabbeinu was davening to Hashem. And he was praying and asking from Hashem, please God, don't let me die. Yeah. You know, Moshe Rabbeinu passed at the age of 120. And Moshe did not want to die. And I'm going to give you, I collected from the Midrash, the, the conversation between Moshe Rabbeinu and God. And you will see, it's, it's Moshe. <laughs> I will, I will start. And it's written, When the time of Moshe Rabbeinu came to pass from this world, God told him, He says, it's your time to pass away from this world. I'm doing, the, I'm, I'm giving you in Hebrew and also in English because I want the ones that do not understand really truly in, in English and no Hebrew that will, they can understand the words that I'm saying right now. So he said, God, I worked so hard and now you're, and you know, it's like, it's like a person, like a marathon runner. He runs all the marathon and he, almost at the end he sees the line, the deadline, you know. He sees the stripe over there. He's almost there and, and a person stops him. No, you cannot, you cannot go through. We, he's almost going into the land of Israel. He went through hell with all of the children of Israel. And he's almost there. He's, you know, like you're almost tasting. You're almost tasting it, and you cannot touch it. It's, you cannot do anything. He says, God, I worked so hard, and this is what I deserve. This is my merit. I, are you going to cause me to die now? So the, he says, I'm not going to die. He says, I won't die, like the King David says in Tehillim. I won't die. I will live, and I will tell all of your stories, God. He says to God. And so he says, Amar lo akadosh lo baruch hu, rav lecha. He says, God, God told him, please, calm down, he says. At potavo velotosif, you're going to come until, up till here, and you're not going to add anything. Karait Yoshua, he tells, he tells him, Karait Yoshua v'atzavenu. He says, call Yoshua, and I will speak to him. I will command him to lead the children of Israel. From here we know that the... That leadership in, in the Jewish people does not go by inheritance, which means if I'm a king, if I'm a big rabbi, then my son will be a big rabbi. It does not go like this. It's only if the person really deserves it. Because Moshe Rabbeinu had two children. And they, were not the, they did not continue him. And then he had his brother Aaron. And they also did not continue him. Yoshua continued him. You cannot be, and you know who was Yoshua? Yoshua was his student. But you know the story of Yoshua. I'll give you just quickly a, a small brief about Yoshua. Yoshua Binun it's written. It's written about Yoshua Binun, a beautiful thing. I, I will give it, I have it here. I'm going to give it to you. You will be shocked, but uh, <laughs> I'll tell you. It says about Yoshua that his father came from Jerusalem. Listen. Aviv shel Yoshua dar b'Yerushalayim v'ishto akera. And his wife, it's, uh, I'm talking about... Wait, wait, wait. Shh. It says about Yoshua that Yoshua Binun, dear women, he was a prosecutor, it's not, it's not a prosecutor, Mutzila Poal. He was the prosecutor of Paro. How was he the prosecutor of Paro? He was born to a father and mother that they did not have children. 
And his father asked people who, you know, that knew, that knew uh, astrology, and they told him, if you will have a son, he's going to kill you and marry his mother. Okay. Listen very carefully, Yeshua. So days came, and his wife got pregnant, and she did have a son, so he wanted to kill the son, so he threw the son to the ocean. A big fish came and swallowed and swallowed Yoshua. The, this fish was caught in order to bring it in Egypt to, uh, to Pao on his table. So when Pao wanted to open the fish, he heard a baby crying for inside the fish. They opened the fish, he saw a baby. <laughs> he took the baby, dear women, and he raised him. Eventually, he was the, pro the executor, that's the right word, executor of Pao. He killed people for Pao. He was the executor, dear women. So one day, Pao loved him, he wanted to give him a prize. So he wanted to, to get get he wanted to help him to get married. He gave him a wife, and the wife was his mother. So it says in the midrash that he was in with his mother. Dear women, so look, at, dear women. So his his new wife was on the bed, and he came next to her. It says the midrash says that from her breast milk started to pour down so he wanted to kill her because he thought she was, she was a witch and she told him not I'm, I'm not a witch this is a miracle from Hashem because I am your mother because it was written and he truly killed his father and because his father did something against Paro and Paro decided to, pro to prosecute him and then to execute him Yeshua executed his father and he saw his mother on the bed, but then he understood that this was his mother. Yeah. After that, that's why he's called Yeshua Binun, dear women. So, dear women, listen, listen. This Yeshua, this Yeshua became the servant. Yeshua Binun. I'll give you in a minute. The Mashlama. Binun, Nun is uh, in another language, in the Egyptian language, it's Dag, it's a fish. Uh -huh. So it's called Yoshua Binun because he was taken out of the fish. Yeah. Yeah. So dear women, so this Yoshua, look, and you will think how can this person can become the guide, the king of the children of Israel. Dear women, Yoshua Binun was the servant of Moshe Rabbeinu. Everything he went, he wanted to know, he wanted to know the Torah from from his heart, he was he He was running after the Torah. He saw Moshe Rabbeinu and he became his student. He prepared everything in the shul. He prepared when they came, you know, in the tent. Like, it's like it was like a shul. So he prepared all of the chairs. He, he cleaned everything. He went to Moshe Rabbeinu and gave him his robe. He gave him water to clean himself. He did everything, mamash. So Yeshua grew up with Moshe in the palace. כן, באיזשהו שלב הם כן, היה במקביל. כן, באיזשהו שלב הם היו במקביל. So look, you know, that's the ridiculous thing. God put Moshe Rabbeinu, God put Moshe Rabbeinu, dear women, under the nose of Paro. Paro was searching for Moshe Rabbeinu. If you think about it, it's very weird. Paro was searching for Moshe Rabbeinu to kill him. He was searching to kill him. He wanted to kill Moshe Rabbeinu because he heard that there will be a leader for the Jewish people that will take him out of Egypt. Which nobody can go out of Egypt because there were ten gates over there and were there all witchcraft, all of the gates. Which means there were animals above the gates and if a person wanted to go out, he couldn't. It doesn't matter if he was a Jew or not a Jew. Nobody can go out of Egypt. How do we know that God, in the beginning, God showed us that he's going to make a miracle to the children of Israel and they can go out of the gate of, Moshe, of uh, uh, Egypt? Egypt? We know that by Abraham Avinu. Because if you remember when Abraham Avinu went to Egypt with Sarai Menu mm -hmm. and Sarah was, was kidnapped, I'll call it Bimerchot, was taken to Paro's palace and he wanted her over there and she was davening to Hashem. Then the Paro knew that she was the wife of Abraham and he sent them away. They could not go out unless all of the soldiers of Paro, they took them out. 
they escorted them out because you cannot go out of Egypt. Everything was uh, all of the gates were uh, uh, witchcraft. All of the gates, dear women, do you understand? So we know from there that the children, that in the future the children of Israel will have the power to go out because Abraham Avinu, the first forefather of the children of Israel, opened the gate for them. So let's continue, dear women. So Can No, no, better she lo. At shu yatzam kula mi mitzam. At shu zihai tatzme. That shu yodi sipra lo. At magnai tzarich ladat me fu ba ve lanu ba. Ima shelo sipra lo. No, no, no. Kach ayar knikva ba goral mi shamaim. Kach zeh tzarich liot. Acher tu leh magia le le paro. Acher tu leh magia oset ma shu tzarich lasa. The, the goral shel adam. Let's continue. So he tells him, please call Yoshua. Amar lefanav, ribono shel olam. Moshe Rabbeinu says, ribono shel olam. Mipnei ma ani met. He says, why are you going to cause me to die? In bishvil kvodo shel Yoshua, it's because of the honor of Yoshua. Vezarach Hashem Shuvah Hashem King Solomon says, and the sun rises and the sun goes down. It's because this is the time of Yoshua, you know, to be the king of the children of Israel. Because, because of that you want me to die, he says. Who says, I can ask Yoshua Lisrara, and he says, It's okay, let him be the ruler, and I won't be the, I will be his servant. It, it's okay with me, he says. Not today. You know how it's hard? He has a good eye. You know how it's hard for a rabbi to say, my student will come, will be a big rabbi, and I will move and will serve him? You know, it reminds me, Arab Gdalia Chayun. It reminds me, because Rabbi Gdalia Chayun, you remember that I told you about the Rashash, Rabbi Shalom Sharab, and I told you that he was the servant in the yeshiva of Bet El. You remember that he was a servant over there. And when Rabbi Gdalia Chayun knew that he was such a scholar in Torah and the secrets of Torah, he put him next to him on his right on his right side, and he made him sit down over there, and he called him my rabbi. This is very hard. You can understand, this is a parent in a family, when he sees that his son is more wiser, father, that his son is more wiser than him, it causes envy. And the takalot, if we'll be uh -huh. true to ourselves, you'll see in the home, even a mother, it calls, something moves. This is the evil inclination, but when a person has a good eye, and he teaches, it's not easy, you have to teach yourself. A good eye, then Bezrat Hashem, you can do everything with love and with a smile, of course. <laughs> with love and a smile, dear women. Mm -hmm. So he says, it's not a problem, he will be the leader and I will serve him, he says. אמר לו הקדוש ברוך הוא, ותעשה לו כמו שהיה עושה לך, he says, you will do to him exactly what he did to you. משה רבינו said yes, אמר לו הן. מיד הסכים משה והלך אחר יהושע וקרא לו רבי יהושע. משה רבינו went to him and he called him רבי יהושע my rabbi he said, you are my rabbi. He called him and it was more than that. נתיארה, he took, I'll explain to you what he exactly did. It's not written here but I'll explain to you. Before the rabbi wakes up the, the person that serves him should come in, put, you know, a, a container with water, put his robe over there, everything that he needs. He should go to the place where he teaches and prepare everything and the food and everything. He should call the people to come and then he should go over there and serve him once he wakes up. So Moshe Rabbeinu did everything. Everything, everything that Yoshua did to him, he did to him. Now Yoshua, when he saw that, Valach Achar Yoshua, and Karalo Rabbi Yoshua, Nitiara Yoshua Meod. Yoshua became so afraid, he was terrified. You're calling me rabbi? You call me your rabbi, he said. He says, don't you want me to live and not die? <laughs> if you're the cause that I will pass from, from this world, you have to let me call you rabbi. So he tells me, He says, don't you feel that it's good that I won't pass away? Away, even if you'll be the rabbi and I will be the student. He says, if something will be hard for you, I will teach you. Moshe Rabbeinu tells him. 
but now you'll see the small um, small switch that there's here. אבל קבל עליך שאחיה ואעשה לך כמו שהיית עושה לי. But you have to accept because you love me and I'm, I was your rabbi, you have to accept everything that I do to you with love. Don't be afraid. So I can live. Listen very carefully. אמר לו יהושע למשה רבינו, כל מה שתגזור עליי, אני מקבל בשביל שארה פניך. Everything that you tell me to do, I will accept only that I can see your face. Look what kind of love. This, this is how we need to love each other. ממש, ממש, זאת אהבה. If we had this love between us, if ten men that were, even ten women, will have love this, will have this love, this, this kind of love between them, Mashiach is here now. Now with mercy, <laughs> not with judgment. Now, miyad, it comes. We have so many minyanim, so many minyanim all over the world. And why does Mashiach not come? Because we do not have true love between us, unconditional love. Without jealousy, without nothing, unconditional love, with happiness to, to meet each and every person with a smile, to, to wish good things for each one. This is what we need. So dear women, he says, V'itchil Moshe Rabbeinu la'asot le'yoshua kol ha'kavod sh'aya osse lo'yoshua. And Moshe Rabbeinu did all of the honor to Yoshua exactly as he did to him. And it says, כיוון שנכנסו לאוהל המועד, ירד עמוד הענן שנאמר, וירא השם באוהל מועד בעמוד ענן. And then they went into the tent, the holy tent, and the cloud came upon them. And what happened at that moment, God moved the wisdom of Moshe Rabbeinu to Yoshua. Now this is not an easy thing. A person that teaches all the time and suddenly he does not know what to teach or does not understand what the other person teaches, this is a big problem. So, Yoshua started to die. Amen. So, Yoshua started teaching and Moshe Rabbeinu does not understand anything. And the children of Israel ask Moshe Rabbeinu and Moshe Rabbeinu does not know what to answer. Moshe Rabbein ran to Hashem and he said, God, he said, God, he said, 100 deaths to Moshe Rabbein, but not one jealousy. He says it's better to die a hundred times, but not to have even a small, a small hint of jealousy. תראו מה זה, מאה מיטות ולא קינה אחת, אומר משה רבינו. עד כדי כך. So now Moshe Rabbeinu is speaking to Hashem again. Beparashat Beit Hanan, his 515 prayers he gave to Hashem. And I'm giving you just, you know, a, a glance to what he prayed to Hashem. So Moshe Rabbeinu said to his, he told Moshe to go to him and said to him, Ribbono of the world, what is the one in my hand so that I can die? He says, what kind of sin did I do that I, I, that I deserve to die? He says, אמר לו הקדוש ברוך הוא, מחטאו של האדם הראשון, you are dying because of the sin of the first human being. We all have it. Because the first human, I told you we are all one family. The first human being was one person. The, all of the souls of all of the children in the world were inside him. Okay, When, once he ate, we all ate it with him. Because we are part of his body. So we all ate with him. It says, except for the hands, dear women, because, <laughs> because it says that Chava forced him to eat. So she put it in his mouth, so he didn't use his hands. <laughs> and why do the Kohanim raise their hands? And the forefathers used to pray with raising their hands, because they have the merit, because they, they were created part of the souls of Ab from the hands that did not sin. Do you understand? This is a big, there's a, a lot of secrets inside it. That's why Bipticat Yadayim, dear women, and that's why they had the Mary to dive into Hashem with their hands open, because they were part, their souls were part of their hands that did not sin. So dear women, listen, it says, he tells him, it's because of the first human being. So uh, Moshe Rabbeinu tells him, okay, so he sinned, the first human being, but I did not sin, God. I, he had one mitzvah that you gave him to do, and he did not listen to you. But I did not do that, he says. <laughs> <laughs> Dear women, I was asked about the forefathers, which we are starting to speak about them now. 
So I said that the forefathers prayed with their hands open to Hashem. And today we also open our, hand, our hands to Hashem when we daven because it's like a symbol to receive prosperity. Okay. So we, usually we take the right hand and put it a little bit higher than the left mm-hmm. hand because the half part of our body is kindness and the other half is judgment. That's why we raise a little bit our right hand, which is kindness, so we have mercy from Hashem more than judgment. Judgment means that God needs to give us prosperity because of He brought us to this world. It's like a husband and wife. Once a husband marries his bride, he has the responsibility to provide for her. He is signing in the Ketuba before of witnesses. So he has to provide for her. This is the same thing within the children of Israel and God. We are the bride and God is the groom. So he has this responsibility to provide for us food, everything that we need. So once God, so this is the left hand because he gives us by judgment because he brought us to this world. But we are also asking for mercy from Hashem. Do you understand? We also ask for mercy, Bezrat Hashem. So we need to open the right hand. And then the right hand is a little bit above the left hand. But when we dive into Hashem and we open our hands, angels come towards us. Good angels. We do not see them, but they're all around us. If you daven lishma and you are tsanua, you have to be tsanua also. You are modest and you have a cover on your head and you are davening, open your hands. And really concentrate on Hashem. But if your head is not truly with Hashem, do not open your hand. Why? Because also bad angels come. Because the sitra, the evil inclination, eats from our mitzvot and from our davening. Do you understand? Otherwise it doesn't have any existence. It has ex- existence from us, from what we do. That's why it says, the Arizal, Shudot again says, before we do any mitzvah, we should say, Why? Because it should, it should go under the throne of Hashem and not go to a different, the, the left side. Why? Because we do not remember what we did a minute before and maybe we insulted someone. Maybe we did something bad. Maybe we, uh, uh, purposely we did not uh, give the right money to a person or something that we did in Avera. Maybe Blikavana, without any purpose, we did something. We are only human beings. So to be on the same, then what happens if we daven without an intention to Hashem, it goes directly to the other side, to the Sitra Acha. It goes, instead of going under the throne of Hashem, so that's why we should concentrate. And it's not easy to concentrate. Because just when we want to daven, just then, dear women, look, Moshe Rabbein was davening to Hashem and he was concentrating on him. Just when we want to daven, the evil inclination brings all of the thoughts into us. The grocery list that we need to buy, what our husband needs to do, everything, our children, I need to take my child from the school at the yeshiva from this time. All of the thoughts come in, it's because of the evil inclination. It's the evil inclination, dear women. It knows that we are going to marry by our daven and he does not want us to do that. He does not want the connection between us and God. So it brings all, and everybody has this experience. Mm-hmm. Everything, everything comes in. Mamash, everything, mm-hmm. everything. That, and you know, when we don't daven, our mind is clear. We do not have, the, the, the thoughts do not bother us. But when we do a holy thing, a mitzvah, all of the thoughts come to us. You know, you'll see a, a person who sits next to the TV or goes to a movie. He can concentrate, no problem. <laughs> no problem. The evil inclination is happy. It says anyway, he doesn't think about Hashem in this minute. So it's good, I won't bother him. But once, it's true, it's from life. I'm giving you examples from life. But once we think, once we want to do a mitzvah, or we want to daven, to pray, at that minute, the evil inclination takes all of us soldiers and comes into our mind. Quickly, 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 everything comes inside. Uh, this person made me angry. This I have, the, I, everything, all the thoughts that we have, they come inside our prayers, dear women. <laughs> Could we control it somehow? Yes. Dear women, it's not easy to control, but I will tell you how you, I'll give you a little bit of ways to. First of all, when you feel that this happens to you, think about the word Shabbat. What? The word Shabbat. Shabbat, look at Shin Betaf, the word in front of your eyes. It takes all of the bad thoughts away from you. 
immediately. Say to yourself, Shabbat, 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 Shabbat. It takes everything away. The word itself, the Shabbat Shema, the word, the word itself, Shabbat, takes all of the bad thoughts away from you. Just the word itself, dear women. And then come and come to <laughs> Yes, yes. Just think about the word Shabbat, Mamash. The word Shabbat in front of your eyes. And you will see how the bad, all the bad thoughts will go away. Kin, kin, Amila Shabbat. And another word that helps to take another word. From Pitomak Toret. And I gave you this already once, yeah, but another yeah, word, yeah, first of all is Shabbat, then another word is Rachash. It's from Pitom Aktoret. Rachash, Reish, Chet, Shin, also it's a word that helps to forget bad thoughts and everything that comes into your mind. Just see the letters. When you see the letters, you bring angels around you. Okay? What does it mean, the Rachash? Rachash, Rachash is like to to, uh, to buy something <laughs> and no no, but there in Chetzlicha. Rachash is not to buy something. It's um, like you like lilchosh mashu. Slicha, I'm not lilchosh. Lilchosh mashu. Rachash, whisper something. There Rachash, something moving. There Rachash. Okay. But dear women, it comes from Mitoma Ktoret. Okay, dear women. Rachash. Here, Memulach Taor Kodesh. It comes from Bitom Aktoret. Memulach Taor. Look the Kodesh. It comes from Bitom Aktoret. Okay, and the last letters oh. of it is Rachash. You see it? Memulachta. You, you read it in Pitom Aktoret. You read it twice in the morning in Shacharit and once in Mincha. You read three times Pitom Aktoret. It's inside Pitom Aktoret. Okay, let's continue with Moshe Rabbeinu, dear women. And there's another one, Esh Tamit to Kadal Amitzbeach Lot Tichbe. Dear women, this is from Chumash uh, Vayikra, Perek Vav, Pasuk Vav. The chapter is six, and the verse is six, and chapter six is in Chumash Vayikra. Esh Tamit to Kadal Amitzbeach Lot Tichbe. Vayikra Vav. So let's continue now, dear women. <laughs> Where was I? Okay, Abraham Avinu. So God told him, okay, so what about Abraham Avinu that he announced my name in this world? So Moshe Rabbeinu tells him, but Abraham Avinu had a son, Ishmael. So God tell, told him, okay, so what about Yitzchak? He put his throat on the altar that his father will, will sacrifice him. Yeah. So he said, but Ishmael had a son, but Yitzchak had a son. So God continued, he says, what about Yaakov? Yaakov had 12 sons, righteous sons. From them all of the children of Israel came out. And yeah. he, he's also part of the tribe so of Levi, Moshe Rabbeinu himself. So, so Moshe Rabbeinu tells him, God, look, at, look how he found excuses. And all this for what? Why did Moshe Rabbeinu want to continue to live? <laughs> to go into the, do you understand? To go into the land of Israel, all this in order to go over, the, to, to go through the Jordan River, to go, walk in the land of Israel. He also he said, to God, God, you can cut me to pieces, he said. Pieces by pieces, throw me over the Jordan River, and then over there, put back my pieces, because God said, I promised not to, get, to bring you back. I swore not to let you go into the land of Israel. Yeah. So Moshe Rabbeinu says, God, cut me into pieces, small pieces, and throw me over the, the, the Jordan River, so I, and then put me together so I can, my legs are kept. 
my heel will touch the land of Israel. Do you didn't understand? Yeah. Moshe Rabbeinu started to cry. Ribbono Shalalam, he said, Oy vavoy, he said to my hands that did not pick the fruit from the trees of the land exactly. of Israel. Oy vavoy, he said to the mouth that did not even taste the fruits of Israel. And all of this is because of the mitzvot that you can do only in the land of Israel. Moshe Abed wanted to fulfill the mitzvot that he could fulfill only in the land of Israel. You cannot fulfill them. Maaser, peah, shichacha, everything is in the land of Israel. Ola, everything is in the land of Israel. So this is a mitzvot that Kshurot Beret Israel cannot do it anywhere else. It's only in the land of Israel. So he wanted to be so complete in the mitzvot, in the 630 mitzvot of Akadosh Baruch Hu that gave him. So he wanted to be in the land. Can you even imagine how he wanted? And we today look at the land of Israel like it's like we can give pieces of the land of it. We cannot yeah. give. Look how he wanted to. He said, pieces, cut me to pieces, God. My hands, my legs, every part of me. And just throw me to the other side of the Jordan so I can just be in the land of Israel. Can you understand the holiness that this land has? This is the Holy Land. This is the land of God. This is, it, the whole world belongs to God. The, God created all of the nations. God created and chose the children of Israel to be his firstborns. God created all of the countries and he chose the land of Israel as the Holy Land. God crea created all of the cities. Everything that we create, it's not from us. It's from God. This is the power of, that's, why, that's what we are studying in Tamar Dvora. This is the power that God gave inside us. And with this power, we wake up and we do either good things or bad things. It depends on our choices. But He's still with us. We do bad things with this energy that God gave us. Can you imagine this? It's mamash ungratefulness. Can a person be so... It's like a person eating... He has... You gave him a plate in, in your house. And when he goes out, he, he spits on the plate that you gave him. He speaks badly about you outside. It's the same thing. And can you imagine how merciful he is? Because we immediately are angry with a person who is not grateful to us. But God, no. He has patience. He says, my son will come to me. My daughter will remember me and will come to me back. They will repent. They will do tshuva. So look at the love that he had to the land of Israel, the holy land that was promised for the forefathers. And this promise is the promise from God, not Basar Vadam. It's not a human being that promised it. So this is a promise for eternity. The land of Israel, it belongs to the Jewish people for eternity. Jerusalem belongs to Hashem, to the Jewish people for eternity. You understand the essence of it? The, the mashma'ut shel zeh. This is a deep mashma'ut. You can see that everybody that wanted to give parts of the land of Israel either became very sick like a plant or died. This is what we see, actually see. Not long ago, the president... Sharon, Utsemach. Dear women, because it's not ours to give. It's not. Dear women, it's not ours to give. Don't you understand? It's not ours. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, sometimes I'm shocked from even the nations because either you believe in God or you do not believe in God. If you believe in God and you say you believe in the Bible, then you have to believe that the Holy Land belongs to the children of Israel. For them, for eternity, you cannot take what the creator of the world, the owner of the vineyard said, this is the land of the Jewish people, period. You cannot give it up and you cannot take it. It's them. Only God can do whatever he wants. And if you would understand the, the basic things, and they're very, they very simple, it's not very complicated. It's not. It, it does. It is not covered with any uh, politica, um, politics. politics. It's very. The truth of Hashem is very simple, and it's absolute. You know the difference. People tell me. You know, the truth is relative. It's not relative. Bereshit bara elokim, dear women. Bereshit bara elokim. The end letters of these three words in the beginning, God created is a met. Emet, truth is the name of God. God does not ask for politics. 
God asks only for belief, emunah. And the emunah, a person who truly believes in Hashem, is stick to the truth. La'emet. Emunad vekaba emet. He will not listen to lies. He will not listen to slandering of other people. He will not join them because he will say, well, I have to be with the people, otherwise they will speak about me. He will not do that because it sticks with the truth of Hashem. If uh, the Jewish people and all of the nations would have done this, Messiah would be here. Yeah. There won't be any war. The war comes because of absence. You know what halal rek? You know what a halal rek is? You know a, um, a, a space of emptiness. It comes from a, what kind of emptiness? Emptiness of wisdom. Wisdom of knowing God. Wisdom, because this comes from the evil inclination. We feel, oh, we are strong. We can do whatever we want in this world. We can conquer. We can do. It's not true, dear women. We cannot do anything that we think that we want to do. We can choose to do between good and bad, but then eventually we pay for everything, dear women. And a person, even if he thinks <coughs> he's strong, you know, a person can, God forbid, go walk and cross the street, and from one minute he's not here anymore. That's it. He's not here anymore. So it's only an illusion. It's an illusion of the mind. Do you understand? It's not the truth. The truth is Hashem in this world. And once Mashiach comes and we'll see the Shekhinah on Mount Zaytim, on the mountains of Olive, and there Hashem will, sh exactly like in Egypt, the mountain will be split to two, <coughs> and sh the Shekhinah will be there. We will stand there and just see a Kadosh Baruch Hu, Mamash. Can you understand this image? Mamash, we'll see Hashem. We'll see the Shekhinah. The only time we have the merit to see the Shekhinah is when we pass away. Evil people and good people. At the moment that they pass away, the eyes see the Shekhinah. If you're a good person, the Shekhinah escorts you. But if you're a bad, for that minute you see him and it, it, it goes away. <coughs> So dear women, Moshe Rabbeinu understood the essence of this world. The essence is Hashem. We came just to know Hashem in this world. <coughs> That's what we came to do, to know Him in order to have the merit in the next world. We already had, we already were under the light of Hashem. But we did not know Hashem. So Hashem sent us over here. That we will gain it with merit. That we will truly do what we need to do in this world. But we need to wake up. Oh, yes, Anim. Wake up, wake up. Sleepy people, we need to wake up. Not only the Jewish people, all of the nations, but especially the Jewish people. If we'll do what we came here to do, Mashiach is here with mercy, not with judgment. It depends on us, on our choices. But, <coughs> what was really special about Mashiach Rabbeinu, he spoke to Hashem face to face. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. You're going to get to it. No, but no, no, and sugar, no, I just don't eat it. Did you see that? 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 But all of them were connected to Hashem through Moshe Rabbeinu. He was a dad of Am Yisrael. So why, did, why is it said, Why do they tell you, choose for yourself a rabbi, in order that he will be the chief of prosperity from Hashem to you, that he will feel Hashem, that he will want to go back to Hashem, that he will feel that this inside you and you choose you go to a shul why you choose where to go and God tells you you know what you truly want to know me you'll go to this shul especially to this you'll go over there why because over here I know you can find me I know you'll you'll know my essence my true essence that's the important thing the truth and the truth is very simple mamash <laughs> pashut Okay.
Okay, let's continue, dear women. <coughs> I have a lot of things and I, I want to... I have to tell you what happens with the angels and that Kadosh Baruch Hu when he buries with Moshe Rabbeinu. So we're just at the beginning, please. Let's do it together. And what happens with this, the mother of Moshe Rabbeinu, Yochevet? Yes. Because you remember this mother, Shalom no, Aleinu, the mother of Moshe Rabbeinu buried three children in the same year, Shalom Neda. Miriam, Aaron, and Moshe. So I would like to tell you what happens with it. It's a... Instead of them burying her, she buried three children at the same year, Shalom Neda. If they, she was 120, how old was she? They, they lived more years from than us. Okay. Okay. Madlen Boy Neshama. So he, t he tells him, Ribbono Shalalam, he says, God, he says, but Yaakov Avinu, his feet did not walk on Arafel, on fog, on your fog, because Moshe Rabbeinu did walk on the fog. The clouds took him. Can you understand this? Sometimes I see the, uh, the clouds. I tell my children, wow, I just want to jump inside and just take it, you know. <laughs> it looks like <laughs> to touch it. But Moshe Rabbeinu was. He was in the fog. His legs touched the fog. His legs touched the clouds. He said, Yaakov Avinu, Yaakov Avinu did not have it, he says. And more than that, he says, I spoke to you face to face, he says. And Yaakov Avinu did not have this, he told him. And Yaakov Avinu did not receive the Torah. You gave me, you, I received the Torah and gave it to the children of Israel. I received it from your hands. Why you not one of the other I explained that, and I explained that, and I didn't want to do that now. I gave it to you that there are only three days. And why? Remember me in the end. Okay? Because I didn't speak to you what I wanted. Remember me in the end. It's a good question. I gave it to you that answer. But remember me in the end. I'll give it to you again. Without a doubt. So God tells him, Moshe Rabbeinu, don't continue. He says, Rav Lechal, to speak to you in this thing. He says, don't continue. I don't want to hear you because he does not, because he already swore not to let him go into the land of Israel. He said, do not continue, he tells him. And then it says, he says to God, God, but you're not like a king, a human being king. He says, a human being king, when he has a slave, mm -hmm. then when the slave is young and you know he has power and strength, he loves him. But then when he becomes old, he gets tired of him. He says, God, what do you want that people will say that you got tired? Look how he thought <laughs> that people got, that when I was young, you loved me, and now you, you got know. tired of me, he says. He says, you cannot behave like this, no, God. He I says, please, <laughs> look how many excuses. Every way she yes, every way. <laughs> he, he tells him, <laughs> God tells him, listen, because you, you hit the cellar, the rock, and you did not speak to the rock. I said that you and Aaron, because you did not speak to the, because God wanted him to speak to the rock and that the rock will bring water to the children of Israel. But instead of that, he hit the rock twice. Okay? This the clue. Why did he hit the rock twice? I can wipe the board. Hmm? I will wipe the board and you will see. <coughs> Look over here, dear women. So he hit the rock twice, and why? Rock in Hebrew, shh. Sela. It's called Sela. Rock in Hebrew is Sela. So let's look at the letters in Hebrew and just write them like we hear them. Samech, okay? Samech, you see that? And then we have Lamed, and then we have Ein. Okay? Look, dear women. So what did he do? He hit the rock one time. And because of that, the first letters mm -hmm. of each one of them went out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He hit the rock the second time, and the last letters went out. And what was left over? My mm -hmm. water. My. Mm -hmm. wow. I told you everything starts with the letters and ends with the letters. Wow. You see, he hit the first time, he took off the letters, the, le the first letters of each word. And when he hit the rock the second time, he took the last letters of it, and what was left, the element of water came out of the rock. You understand? Because everything has a, a, a fire, earth, 
uh, water and, um, uh, and wind, okay? רוח, מים, אש ו... מה אמרתי? רוח, מים, אש ועפר. Four elements, רוח, מים, אש ועפר. רוח זה אוויר גם, זה אותו דבר, אוקיי? So everything, so he took out the element of water out of the rock. And why did he do that? He did not do it because, because of himself. He thought about the children of Israel. He said, if I will hit the rock, if, if I will speak to the rock and the rock will bring water, what will the, the prosecutors will say in heaven about the children of Israel, God forbid. They will say, Moshe Rabbeinu tells them to listen to Hashem, they do not, and a rock that does not move, listens when Moshe, then there will be prosecution against the children of Israel. So because of that he hit the rock. Because he wanted to protect the children of Israel. So you understand, because of that he was, he was punished. Because he knew that, but God wanted to teach the children of Israel that also in a kind way a person will, go, will do tshuva. Because the first time that God wanted to bring the children of Israel water, he told them to hit the rock. Not this rock, when they went out of Egypt yeah, and they did not have water. Yeah, yeah. So he told him to hit the rock. So this meant that if the children of Israel do not, do not come back to Hashem, repent to Him with their own will, they will have suffering, God forbid. This is hitting the rock. The second time he told him by, by speaking to them nicely. So which means to speak to the rock, it means that there are two ways to do tshuva. There are two ways of repenting to Hashem. Dear women, one way is by God forbid having suffering. Then you remember, sometimes people even when they have suffering, they do not understand that this is from Hashem and they have to repent. And the second way is by having God puts, uh, co covers you with good things. And then you'll say, wow, but this is only if you are modest. You will say, wow, I do not deserve it. I I'm not such a good person that I will deserve such good things from Hashem. Then you repent. But these two ways, this way depends if you are really modest. That's why it's written, El nekamot Hashem, El nekamot Afia. Because El, Chesed El Kolayom, the word Kuf Lamed, the, the name of God, Kel, this name of God is, is usually considered as a, as a name of mercy. Chesed El Kolayom, that's what says uh, King David in Tehillim, which means the mercy of God is the whole, over the whole day. But then there is, in, in chapter 94, Tzadik Daled, it says, El Nekamot Hashem, which means God is the God of re revenge. Why? Because there are two ways of to, to do tshuva. One is with mercy, but it, it will work on a person that has modesty, that is humble. Otherwise, you won't understand. I deserve it. Betach, I'm a good person. Magiali, I deserve it. I, it I, um, why didn't God think about it before? <laughs> why did he remember right now? But when a person, but when a person is humble, he understands. He says, "Wow, God, you gave me so, much, so a lot of kindness." God, the, I do not deserve it, then he repents. So usually what happens is the suffering. God wants to cleanse us and to remember that we'll remember him and do, and do tshuva, dear women. So, dear women, those are two ways. And Moshe Rabbeinu was supposed to speak to the rock. But he did not do that because of the benefit of the children of Israel. He did not. <laughs> oh, a little bit more. I know it's. I know it's midnight. We are at midnight almost. I know. Yes. Just I heard that Moshe so uh, Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu that uh, in the future, I'm going to uh, if the people of Israel they fight, I mean they they do hurt, and if uh, if they do that, then I have to. Uh, I cannot. I'm gonna destroy them. So that's why you cannot go there because if the 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 is there, I did you hear that? Yeah, better. They are women. Dear women, Shoshana said a beautiful thing. I, I would have come to it, but she, is, she mentions it before, so I'll, I'll give it. Anyway, she said almost all of it. Dear women, one of the reasons that Hashem did not want Moshe Rabbeinu to go into the land of Israel, because everything that Moshe will build or create, if he will build the third temple, will be forever. So instead of God 
punishing the temple, the stones and the wood that build the temple, he will have to punish the, to punish the body of the children of Israel. So instead, all of his anger went on the temple. Do you understand? Because what Moshe Rabbeinu will build will stay for eternity. So God did not want it, uh, he already knew because God knows from the beginning of the world to the end of the world what is going to happen. So God already knew what we are going to do. So b because of that, God did not want him to come into the land of Israel and build the temple because otherwise the wrath of God, God forbid, will be on us, mamash, directly. So dear women, this was also one of the reasons that he did not let him go in. And there were also six sins, small sins, mamash, so that they don't even uh, consider mamash as sins. That, that he counted from Moshe Rabbeinu, but I won't go to, into it right now because I would like to continue. So it says that Moshe Rabbeinu was... Moshe Rabbeinu... Can. You know what? Maybe we'll ask the questions at the end. Yes, so I can continue and... Can I Sheikh? When Moshe Rabbeinu understood... When Moshe Rabbeinu understood... Shh, when Moshe Rabbeinu understood that when Moshe Rabbeinu understood that God is not going to give in, he accepted that he's going to pass away. So what did he do? He wrote 13 books of Torah. You see the book of Torah in the Echal? 13 he wrote. You know how to write 13 books of Torah? He gave... Wow. He gave each tribe a book of Torah. And the, the beautiful, the most gorgeous one he put in the, on, in the ark. Okay, the holy ark. There was one in the holy ark. Thirteen. Because there were twelve tribes and the ark. Thirteen. So he called each tribe. He gave, them, he gave them the book of Torah. And then he gave them words of moral to the men and the women of the children of Israel. And it says that, that when he gave them, he said, God, Moshe Rabbeinu, look how modest he was. He said, I would like to ask your forgiveness. Mm -hmm. He said, I know that I was hard with you. And sometimes I was angry with you. Please, michluli, which means forgive me. Can you understand this? He's the one that put himself in front of them in order that they won't be hurt. He was the one who said that if God, if you will kill them, then you should take me out of your book. This is Parashat Etzaveh that is not even, his name is not mentioned over there. He was the one that sacrificed. This is a sacrifice without condition. This is love without condition. So he said to them, please forgive me. So they said to him, we forgive you. Please forgive us for all of the sorrows. All of the sorrows that we caused you during that time, he said. Shh. Then it comes to the time that this is the last minute of Moshe Rabbeinu in this world. So God says to the, to the angel Gabriel, he says, go and bring the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu. <laughs> and the angel Gabriel is crying. And he's crying so hard. And he says to God, he says, God, I cannot bring his soul. This is the one, his soul is part of all of the children of Israel. He is the one that sacrificed himself for the children of Israel. I cannot do that. And then he sees the angel of death. The angel of death was laughing and dancing mm -hmm. and just waiting that God will ask him to take the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu. And he tells him, the angel Gabriel, why are you laughing? He says, I'm waiting that God will ask from me, me. to take his soul. Mm -hmm. And Gabriel says to God, I cannot bring him. So God asks the angel Michael, Michael. He says, the Malach Michael, please go and bring the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu. It's like a test. He's testing them. Testing. And Michael says, I cannot take him. I taught him Torah. How can I take him? And he goes to the Malach, the angel that is responsible for the teaching of Torah. And he says also, I was his rabbi. I cannot take my student. Can I, a rabbi take the soul of his student? No, he says, I cannot do that. So God calls the, de the angel of death. And the angel of death is so happy. To, he's the, dancing to go and do exactly what God wants him to do. <laughs> So, 
the angel of death goes. אני מבינה מסמלה, אני רוצה עוד רגע את הערה. אבל איך המלאכים מסתובבים לקדוש ברוך הוא? כן. זה אפשרות, זה שלהם שהם לא יכולים לקחת אותו, כי הם לימדו אותו, הם חלק ממנו. אז הם אמרו לו שהם לא יכולים לקחת אותו. נשים יקרות, then came the angel of death. So the angel of death is asked to take the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu. And Michael the angel and Gabriel tells him, they say, they call him the angel of death, the angel of death, אין שלום, אין שלום אמר השם לרשעים. There's no peace for the wicked ones. They tell the angel of death because he's wicked. So they tell him there's no peace for the wicked ones. So he comes to Moshe Rabbeinu and he says to him, אמר לו, מי שלחך אליי, he says, משה רבינו tells him, who sent you to me? So he tells him, מי שברא את העולם, he says, who who created the world and the souls, he sent me to you, he tells him. So משה רבינו אומר לו, יש בי כוח יותר מכל באי עולם. I have the power, the spiritual power, more than all of the people in the whole world, he says. He says, because I, when I was born, I was born already circumcised. I was already born circumcised, he says. And at the day that I was born, I spoke to my mother and father, he says. There's also a story about Ben Sira. Ben Sira was born to the, the daughter of Yirmiyahu Anabi, the prophet. And it says that his daughter, when she was pregnant, she gave birth to a child on the seventh month of pregnancy. And once he went out of her, he bowed down to his mother. He bowed down to her. Ishtachavela, ben Sira Kaulo. Ishtachavela, he was talking to her, and, she, 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 and he had teeth, and he told her that she, he wants her to bring him a chicken to eat. ממש בן סירה. So משה רבינו says, look, משה, I'm just giving you so you will have a sense of what used to happen. Today we do not, we do not, we cannot accept, because today we are so attached to the physical world, we do not see the spiritual world. But before they were attached to nature, so they could have seen the spiritual world. Women could have known how to speak to pigeons. Women knew, ממש היו נשים שהיו מדברות עם יונים. So, but we lost it. it. We still have it, but we need to wake up in order to have it. We need to attach ourselves to Hashem and to nature, because nature is Hashem. Do you understand? So Moshe Rabbeinu says, you cannot touch me. God gave me the power, and once I was born, I spoke immediately to my father and mother. Shh. I did not even drink from my mother's breast milk, he says, only with payment. Arag Besachar, because you remember Batia, the, the Pharaoh's daughter, yeah. she paid her in order to, bre to breastfeed him. Yes. So he said, even that, and he says, I am the one that spoke with Hashem face to face. Yes. God gave me the merit to bring the ten plagues over Egypt. He said, God gave me the merit to open the sea. You know I'm talking about the sea. But before he came to the understanding that God is not going to give up, and he's going to pass away. Moshe Rabbeinu, because we, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu asked from all of the creation to daven for him. He went to the ocean. He said to the ocean, uh, he, he said to the sea, please daven for me and ask from Hashem to, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to save, to my, save life. my life. So the ocean said, how can you ask me this? You are the one that split me to 12 paths. You have more power than me. He said to the ground, to the earth, and the earth, how can you ask me? You are the one that once you killed with the name of God, the Egyptian. It went out, I, I had to cover him. You have more power than me. He went to the sun and he went to the moon. And they said, how can you ask us? You stopped us. You had the power to stop our moves. Because you know everything <laughs> circles around earth. It's not that everything circles around the sun. By the Torah, everything circles around earth, not by, around the sun, dear women. So he went to the stars and asked them, and all of them answered, everyone, even the, the orchards, ev all the creation said, we cannot, we cannot even help ourselves. <laughs> Furthermore, that we can help you, you have more power than us. So he tells Malach Hamavet, he tells the angel of death, 
you see, I, God gave me more power than all of the creation here. So he says to him, and I spoke with him, panim al panim. Mm -hmm. And he tells him, and the angel of death does not give up. And Moshe Rabbeinu, with a shine, because you know, he, the children of Israel could not look at the face of Moshe Rabbeinu. In order to look at him, he had to put a cover. Why? Because his soul shone out of his body. This is like Rabbi Meir Baalanes, Rodot Agenelenu. Why was he called Meir? His name was not Meir, but he was called Meir because he, the, the light of his soul was, was going, glowing from his face. So Moshe Rabbeinu, you could not look at him. You remember Chava? Chava, the first woman, she was so beautiful in her soul. The first human being could not even look at her. Her soul was so beautiful, the light was so strong, he couldn't even look at her. Only after they sinned, the light went in. So the body covered the light of the soul. We need that the, the soul will lighten from inside, outside. That when the people look at us, they can see the brightness, the sparkles of this soul. This, this, and, and you can see, that they, this is called, this is Moshe Rabbeinu. So it says that the angel of death wanted to kill him, but because of his... Uh, his energy, the brightness of around his face, he couldn't touch him, he couldn't come near him. He went back to Hashem and God told him, how did you think you can take my son? He said, did you think, how did you think you can take his soul? He was very angry with him, Hashem, that he did volunteer for this job. You remember I told you, you remember, Megagalim Chayam. You remember, which means that, the, that, God forbid, if a person comes and does a bad thing, it's because he already has a sack of, of sins around his back. But good, which means merit comes by a person who has merit. And, and sins come by a person who has already sack of sins behind him. Dear women, so he told him, how, did you, how could you take his soul? Where did you think you can take his soul from? So he tells him, you thought you can take, just a minute. So he tells him, you thought you could take his soul from his face? From which side of the body you th thought you can take? So he tells him, so he says to him, God tells the, the angel of death, you cannot take his soul from his face because his face saw my face. It's holy, you cannot take it. Oh. He says, did you think his, you can take his soul from his hands? No. He told him, you cannot take it from his hands because these are the hands that accepted the Torah, the Ten Commandments, the two tablets, they, they held it. You remember I taught you that they were fighting God and Moshe Rabbeinu over the tablets because after the children of Israel sinned, God wanted to take it back. Moshe Rabbeinu took it down to him. You remember? And Moshe Rabbeinu win. He won. <laughs> and the tablets were, he says, you cannot take him from his hands. But that hand was to hit the rock. It doesn't matter. Okay. But, the, but the, the tablets were also already us. So that's, you know why? Sh you, sh I'll explain it. It's a beautiful question. He says, well, anyway, Moshe Rabbeinu uh, broke, yeah. broke the tablets. Dear women, he broke it because then the Yerusim Shaloit Gashmu. Did you understand? It's a marriage that not, did not come to completion. Uh, exactly. Didn't, it didn't consummate. He did not consummate because otherwise we would have, God forbid, all died. Do you understand? Because then we sinned after we were married totally to Hashem. And Bezat Hashem, Kshagia Mashiach, we will be. But meanwhile, we are only engaged. Do you understand the difference? The mamash kacha baruchaniyut, kacha bagashmiyut. So dear women, he says, so what did you think? Maybe from his legs you thought you can take him? He said, you cannot take him from his legs. Because those are the legs that touch the clouds. I told you the fog, he walked on it. So they are also sanctified. You cannot touch it. So he was angry with him and told all the agent of, of death to go for, away from him, God told him. He was very angry. So then how did he bury Moshe Rabbeinu, dear women? So God took three angels. M Michael, Michael, it's the angel Michael, the angel Gabriel, and the angel Zagziel, it's an angel of Torah. Three of them came around the bed of Moshe Rabbeinu. Shh. 
Michael, the three angels prepared the bed and all the covering and everything that the sheets, everything that the bed needed to have. You know, the pillows, everything on the bed they prepared. God told, shh, God told Moshe Rabbeinu to lie down on the bed with his back to the bed and he told him to take his hand and to put it on him, he said. And look, what I have to read this for you because it's a conversation between the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu and God. And with this, we're going to finish today. I have to, but you have to listen to the conversation. So God tells him, put your hands on your chest, he says. Close your eyes, he says. And then, immediately he called his soul inside because the soul is in the body. Amar la biti. He says, my daughter, God tells the soul, my daughter, He said, 120 years, I gave you a limit of living in, his, in this righteous per, person's body, he says. Don't be late. I just gave you 120 years, he tells the soul. Shiva nefesh, and the soul answers, she says, you are the God of gods. You know everything. You are the God of all of the spirits, she says. In your hand, you have the soul of everyone in the world, every creature in the world. He, she says, you, you put me inside the, the body of this righteous person. Is there any body that is purer than this and clean, than this body that even a fly did not come near him? Even a fly did not come in near him, she says. The soul, and he never had a bad eye for anything. He had a good eye when God told him to put his hand on Yeshua. He said, one hand, God. Moshe Rabbeinu blessed him with two hands. When Yeshua Benun came to him and he said, you see, he told, think about it, think about today's days. That when a person comes to a rabbi and tells him, you know, this and this, your students are now becoming big rabbis and they are giving prophecies. How angry he could get. But Moshe Rabbeinu, he came to him and said, Eldad and Meldad in the, in, in the camp, they are prophesizing. And he told them, I wish that all of the children of Israel will prophesy, will have prophecy. Can you even imagine this? This is a good eye, not even a drop of jealousy. Because of jealousy, the bones in the grave rot. The bones, because of jealousy. So she said he had a good eye. I do not want to leave him. I want to stay here. It's a good place. I love his body, she says. Amar la Kadosh Baruch Hu. God tells her, Al ta'achribiti. Don't be late, my daughter, he says. Because we are truly the, the children of God. We are the daughters of a king. Can you, can you understand this? We are all, our souls are, are daughters of a king. We the are the daughters of the king. Of the woman, it's the, the daughters of the king. Yes, and the men are, yes, and the men are the sons of a king. He gia ketzech. It's your time that I will put you under the throne with me, he tells the soul. He says it's El Srafim, Bofanim, the Malachim, the Kruvim with all of the angels. I'm going to bring you to a, your, a place that you cannot even in your imagination can feel the, the spirituality of, of kindness and, and love. And love, unconditional love without... You know, we all want to be loved. All of us want to... We are searching for love. We are searching for love from our husbands, our parents, our children. We are... So, every human being in the world searches for love. This is a place that there's unconditional love. And the love that does not, that does not stop. Nothing we can do will stop this love. So he says, Amra she tells him the soul, 
טוב לשבת בזה הצדיק. She says, it's good for me to sit inside this צדיק, she says. She says, I want to stay over there. כיוון שראה הקדוש ברוך הוא, God saw that he, she's not giving up, the soul is not giving up, נטל נשמתו בנשיקת פה. God gave him a kiss, ממש בנשיקת, on the mouth and no, took the soul. תראו מה זה, מיתת נשיקה. Dear women, ממש מיתת נשיקה. שנאמר וימת שם משה עבד השם על פי השם. which is written that God took the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu by his mouth, which means a death of, of, the, of a kiss, he says. And God was crying over the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu, over the body of Moshe Rabbeinu. He says, And God, Mamash, you know Kina, you know the women that start to cry when a person passes away? And they start to do a kina, to say songs and things for the person that passed away. שנאמר, מי יקום לי מראי, מי יתייצב לי עם פועלי אבן? ומלאכי השרת בוכים, and the angels were crying with Hashem. When they saw the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu, when he passed away, they said, ואומרים, והחוכמה מהם תימצא? And now, what, where will the wisdom come from? Because he was the tube of knowledge and the connection between Hashem and the children of Israel. He was the connection. Who are ya chibur? He was the connection. Vashamayim amu and the and the sky were crying and the earth was crying because you know they, they are connected. He connected to heaven and earth. Once Moshe Rabbeinu received the Torah. The Shechina went down on Mount Sinai, which means there was a connection with heaven and earth. And this physical, and Bezrat Hashem, Kshagia Mashiach, it will be again Bezrat Hashem. And the sun and the moon and the stars and the whole creation were crying over Moshe Rabbeinu. Dear women, Bezrat Hashem, Kshagia Mashiach, Tzitkenu B'mera B'yameinu, Amen. Kshagia Mevaser El Yaron Avi Zachur Latov, Shebezrat Hashem, Leolam Yiparad Adam Yichavor B'dar Alacha, יחיד ברבים הלכה כרבים. God bless you, dear women.